Okay, well done if you've made it this far. Welcome to year 13. Uh, so we're continuing with simple harmonic motion here and we're looking now at forced oscillations. Okay, what we uh, did at the end of last year was we set e examples like, for example, a pendulum. So we had a pendulum, we just let it go and we let it do its own thing. Okay, that's what's called a free oscillation. But now we're doing forced oscillations. Okay. So we need to be clear what we mean by a forced oscillation, and then we need to look at this term called resonance, which is the most important part, really, of this first part of year 13 in simple harmonic motion, and when resonance happens. So like everything else, when we start a topic, what we really need to do is to have some vocabulary so that we can discuss what we're talking about. Okay, and this has got all the key vocabulary. Quite often in the exam, they'll ask you to define these terms. So any oscillation has a natural frequency. This is the frequency it will vibrate if no external forces act. So, for example, with the pendulum, you pull it back, you let it go. After that, you let it do its own thing, okay? This is what's called a free vibration. Okay, that's what we've looked at. Everything we've done so far is free vibrations. But quite often, what you've got is not something where you just let it go and you let it vibrate. Quite often, what we've got is something else that's making it vibrate, which itself is oscillating. So a classic example of this would be the parts in a car. Um, if you've got the parts in a car, you could like hit the gear stick, for example, and the gear stick would probably vibrate a little bit. Okay, but what can happen is that as the wheels go around, the wheels aren't quite balanced correctly. That creates a vibration. Okay, and that's what's called the driving frequency. Okay, and the driving frequency will make the gear stick vibrate. Okay, and that's called a forced vibration. So it tries to make it vibrate at a particular frequency. Okay, but if these two frequencies, the driving frequency and the natural frequency, so if these two things aren't the same, then what's going to happen is the two vibrations will go in and out of phase with each other. And the uh, amplitude of the um, driven an oscillation will get bigger and then smaller again, okay? Quite a difficult idea to get your head around just to talk around it, but I'll show you some examples in a minute which hopefully will make it um, clear. Okay, the key term here is that if the driving frequency is equal to the natural frequency, okay, then what happens is the amplitude of the vibration gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and this is the key idea. This is resonance, okay? This is what it's all about really in this topic. Okay, resonance. So, a lot to take in there, but don't worry, we'll break that down for you and make it a little bit clearer step by step. Okay, so here's a video um, that somebody's helpfully done for me and I've nicked off YouTube of two of a, a driven vibration. So we've got two pendulums hanging on the string here. This one's being made to vibrate, so this is the driving frequency. Okay, here's the driven oscillation. Okay, what you'll notice is that the energy is being transferred from the driver to the driven oscillation here. Okay, this one is always behind this one at the moment, okay, because this one is moving in the same direction that this one is accelerating. Okay, that makes a pi by two phase difference. Have a look at that. I'm just going to take that back again, give you another chance to have a look at it at the start. Okay, so if you watch again, this one is always a quarter of an oscillation between behind this one. So if you look, as that one starts to go um, through the middle, then this one is at this end. Okay, so there's a pi by two phase difference between these two oscillators. Okay, so more and more energy gets transferred from the driver to the driven. And in this special case, in coupled pendulums, this isn't quite like your car driving along the road because what happens is eventually all of the energy goes from this pendulum to this one. Okay, and then what happens, well, what happens then is this one becomes the driver and this one becomes the driven and the energy starts to transfer back in the opposite direction. Okay, but an important thing to notice here is this pi by two phase difference. Okay, the driver is always a quarter of an oscillation ahead of the driven one. Okay, that's what makes the energy transfer. Okay, this one's always pulling this one in a direction that this one is trying to accelerate. Okay, so in that example, uh, the driving frequency, the frequency of the driver and the natural frequency okay, were the same because the pendulums were the same length. Okay, what we need to think about is what would happen if the driving frequency and the natural frequency weren't the same. Okay, well, this uh, 
animation hopefully will make that clear for you. So what we've got here is um, we've got a signal generator here driving um, an oscillator and we've got a mass which is just on the end of a spring. We can have, uh, change various things here. Okay, it'd be really well worth the time to go and have a look at this on uh, FET. Nice, lovely, free animations that hopefully some of you have already looked at already. We can change the mass here. So I'm going to turn the mass to 5 kilograms. I'm going to make the spring constant 100 newtons per meter. And if I did the maths on that, if I did T equals 2 pi root M over K, I'd find the period of this oscillation was about 1.4 seconds. Okay, this is the natural frequency. That's got nothing to do with what's going on down here. The natural frequency of a 5 kilogram mass on 100 newtons per meter spring is about 1.4 seconds. That's the period. That means the frequency of that oscillation, the natural frequency, is about 0.7 hertz. Okay, you'll notice that on here I can change the driving frequency. So I'm going to put the driving frequency on 1 hertz at the moment, and we're just going to have a look what happens. So here's my driver that's going up and down. Here's the mass. Okay, you'll notice that I get quite complicated phase relationships. Sometimes this is going up and this is coming down. Sometimes one's going up and the other one's going up too. And nothing particularly exciting happens. Okay, the mass tends to pretty much sit there and it, the oscillation gets slightly bigger and slightly lower. Okay, but you never get a very big oscillation. Okay, if I turn this frequency up, okay, what you'll notice, I'll go all the way up here as high as it goes to 6 hertz. Okay, at 6 hertz, okay, the mass pretty much doesn't move at all because as soon as the mass is trying to go up, then the oscillator is going down and vice versa. Okay, so you end up with the mass pretty much staying in the same place. Yeah. If I just turn this off for a sec and turn the frequency all the way down, Okay, if I just go to a very low frequency here, let's say 0.1 hertz, if I can get it to 0.1, and I turn it on, what you'll notice now is that this goes up very, very slowly, and this tends to move with it. I'm going to just turn the amplitude up a bit here so you can see. Right, but the amplitude of the one of the mass up here Okay, and the amplitude of the driving frequency here, they're about the same, okay, because there's no extra oscillation, but it will vibrate as much as the driver makes it go up and down, okay? Just so you can see, I haven't tricked you there, I'm going to go back up to 6, okay? But at 6, you'll notice that once that's settled down, it's settled itself down a bit, this pretty much stops, because this end is going too fast for this to really react to it. However... Okay, this is the really important bit. If I just set that back down there, get there again. Okay, if you remember at the start, I said the natural frequency of a 5 kilogram mass on 100 newtons per meter spring, that is about um, 0.7 hertz. The period is about 1.4 seconds, so the frequency is about 0.7 hertz. So if I turn this back down again, what we find is that once we start to get around 0.7 hertz, okay, then you start to see a constant phase relationship between these. They're pi by 2 out of phase. Look at what's happening to the mass. Okay, the oscillation of the mass gets bigger and bigger and bigger. I think it's 0.71, so I'm going to just try and turn that. At 0.71 hertz, okay, then we get a bigger and bigger oscillation. Okay, this is called resonance. Let's turn this up slightly so you can... So you can see, so we get a bigger and bigger um, oscillation. Let's go get rid of the damping, which also we'll come back to later. Okay, and this is the effect of resonance because this is always pi by two out of phase with this. Okay, the oscillation will just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, obviously this is not quite like the couple pendulums because I'm putting more and more energy into the system and a couple pendulums we took all the energy out of this, so it all went into the mass. In this case, we're putting more and more energy in. Okay, we'll come back and look at this damping thing um, in the next lesson. So we would have done a real experiment like this, where we just moved the frequency between 1 and 2 hertz. We set up a 300 gram mass on one of our springs, which gives the natural frequency around 1.4 hertz. Okay, and you find that you get a very big oscillation around there. This gives you a crucial graph, okay? So if you've understood all this, you'll be able to understand this graph. 
this is a graph of the amplitude of the oscillation against the driving frequency. Okay, very important you understand what's on the axes, as always, of this graph. So this is the amplitude of the oscillation. This is the driving frequency. Okay, and what we find is, okay, that at very low frequencies, then the amplitude isn't zero because the, the driver is going up and down and the mass just goes up and down with that driver. Okay, as we get closer and closer to this line, then the amplitude increases and the biggest amplitude we can get is when the driving frequency here, about uh, just over 50 hertz on this, is equal to the natural frequency of the oscillator. So this must be some sort of oscillation where the free vibration has a period of about 52 hertz. Once you go past that, okay, then you don't get that constant phase relationship, so the energy doesn't transfer so well, and we do go down to zero. Again, eventually, once you get to very, very high frequencies, the driver is oscillating so fast that the driven oscillation doesn't really get a chance to react to it. Okay, so this is the phenomenon of resonance. Okay, it's very important, um, both to us doing physics A level, but in the world in general. Just a few practical examples of where resonance is important to us. Okay, if you're a granny, you need to know what frequency to press, uh, to push at, in order to get your little grandchild to swing on the swing nice. Okay, that's maybe not the most important example, but it's a nice little example to give you the idea of resonance. Granny can't just close her eyes and just push at random times. She needs to push every time that swing comes back. Okay, all music really relies on resonance. Okay, when you pluck a string, there are all kinds of vibrations in there but most of them cancel each other out, and the only big vibrations you get are the ones where the frequency is the natural frequency of the string. Okay, microwave ovens uh, use resonance because the water molecules have a natural frequency of vibration, and you bombard them with microwaves with the same frequency. That makes them vibrate more. That's what heats things up in a microwave. Okay, and MRI scans, okay, magnetic resonance imaging scans, rely on the um, frequency of oscillation of uh, various atoms and uh, bonds within inside the uh, material that's been scanned. Okay, Don't worry about the details of MRI scanning, they're a bit complicated. Just understand that the frequencies, and there are natural frequencies of uh, things oscillating in here, and by measuring those natural frequencies, the computers can establish what's inside your brain.